Things Gary Does. Hello again, this is Gary, and I'm going to be doing a little painting, so um, let's get started. Alright, so this video, um, uh, the only thing I went into it thinking about was some sort of bat creature. Um, but I wanted it to be like a, a cutesy, not a cutesy, but like I wanted it to be a charming bat, something that people wouldn't be like scared of, but like, oh, that's cute. Um, which is odd because I, I mean, I'm not averse to cute things. I just don't typically draw them all that much. Um, and I actually don't know that much about bat anatomy. So, um, I did a little bit of research off camera, but not even like that much. So there's a lot of guesswork and a lot of liberties taken with it. Um, this video, uh, was sped up, um, to 900%, so I guess that's nine times the speed this whole process took me, um, about two hours to complete, um, which is a little longer than I would have liked, but this is, uh, using a technique I'm not as comfortable with, um, but I feel like I can, I should continually, uh, try to get down, um, but yeah, you can see the guys already come along pretty quick, and uh, this was probably about 15, 20 minutes into the process. I don't know. I don't know. I was trying to keep track of where I was at different times, but I stopped doing that at one point. So I don't know, but you can see the basic outline of what I've done with the bat, um, just outlining, and now I'm blocking them in because this whole, um, this technique relies on starting from the darkest um, value and slowly building up um, the light to define the form. Now that's kind of similar to what I was doing before, but this one um, is a lot more detail oriented. Like obviously it's a character and it's close up, so it's going to be a lot more detailed. But you can see here I'm taking little increments of value and I'm applying them and building up on them. And I'm not as good as <laughs> I would like to do with this because it requires a lot of patience and a lot of like kind of, uh, what is it, sketchy kind of strokes to build it up accurately. And I've been, it's kind of counterintuitive to me now because I've been trying to do a lot of broader strokes and improve my line. And this one, this technique in particular, um, actually wants you to be all kind of fluffy with your lines and scratch around a lot. Um, so it's kind of awkward going back and forth, but both techniques are, are very valuable. Um, I keep saying technique. Um, the technique I was using before was from Fang Zhu, and this one I actually learned first, and I got, I learned this from watching, uh, Bobby Chu's videos. Um, he was like the first one I really, uh, followed much on YouTube as far as how I'm learning how to digitally paint. So this whole painting sort of, inspired by his style because he draws a lot of cutesy kind of animals um so you can see already i've got the the face drawn in um just using those values and the form's not perfect but you understand like the shape of the head roughly and how everything's working out um the real benefit of this style as you, you may have noticed from the video before this even though they're kind of different subject matter um you're a lot you're able to be a lot more broad with uh Feng Zhu's approach. He usually does a lot of really sketchy things and just uh sort of suggests things here and there. But with this this process where you're building up the values slowly with a soft round brush, you're kind of forced to consider the details and how everything's going to link up with one another and where the lighting is coming from almost absolutely like you you see here I'm trying to figure out where the Lighting's going to go for the ear and the inside of the ear, and you see I'm already laying down a rim light. It's just a lot of, is there a lot more thinking as far as, well, not more thinking, more, um, more details, like, yeah. But the nice thing about it, though, is if you've got all those details down in your mind and you know where you're going with it, like you've laid down a good groundwork, um, then it's really easy just to, uh, keep layering on the values and just kind of defining the form, you can almost turn your brain off at some point. So when you're like, okay, I know exactly what I want this to look like. I know exactly where my lighting's coming from. And I just need to keep building up the values. And so later on in the painting, once I get down to the rest of the body and I'm pretty much um, defined with the form, then it's just kind of 
fiddling with the details, making sure there's no spots left over. That's one thing, one tough thing I have with this um, style is I tend to not <laughs> get all of the uh, black covered. Like you can see right underneath the bat's eyes and to the um, our right side of its nose, um, there's still a lot of black dark values in there. Um, it's just because I space out too much <laughs> and I uh, forget to define those properly. Um, but yeah, so I was actually not all that excited <laughs> to start this drawing. Um, and I'm, and I was just kind of like, okay, well, let's get something down, get a video up and, um, show people something else, something kind of different from what I usually draw. Um, but as I started going, like at, at this point, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. This is turning out to be a little in enjoyable. And so kind of picked up my attitude after that point. Um, this was the wings, especially with the bat are were definitely a part of it. I was like, well, I'm not really sure how this works. Um, well, fun fact, I mean, I kind of knew this before, but I didn't know exactly how it went, but like a bat's wings, like the, the bones, I guess you want to say, that connect the bat's wings so it can fly are actually like its fingers. So you see the little, little protrusion at the very end that's touching the ground that's like its thumb. And then the little parts that stick out, like the end, the tips of Batman's cape, <laughs> those are actually like the tips of its fingers. And so it, that's how it controls its flight really well, is because it's got finger-like control over its wings. And so um, I tried to convey that, and it kind of looks like that here. Maybe I kind of lost it near the end of the painting, but you can see it well enough. And I wasn't trying to be totally anatomically correct. I obviously took a number of liberties, especially with like the face. I'm, pretty sure I got the nose wrong, but, you know, I think most people looking at this will understand <laughs> that it's a bat, so I wasn't worried about it all that much. Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, as you can see, um, this style of uh, technique kind of only uses a handful of layers. You can see over there on the right, I've only got the one right now. Um, and you could use a lot of layers, like each level of uh, value, you could probably make a new layer. But I tend to color pick a lot, and I don't know, I just try to keep things on one layer as much as possible. It makes things faster, as far as like your computer running speed. Um, and then it just makes things simpler. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to make sure... Hmm... Okay, I was afraid that it stopped recording for a second, so I had to check that out. Um, let's see. So, I put them in pants and suspenders. I thought that would sell the cuteness thing. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, the trickiest part is, um, and I figured it out at the end, but, you know, with a bat's ears and wings especially, like... It has a kind of lighting property that I kind of avoid um, in most of my drawings. You notice, I, if you've seen any of my other work, it's usually like a lot of robots and stuff. Um, but really with thin flaps of skin like the ears and the wings, you really should um, do a lot of subsurface scattering. And that means like when the light goes through the skin, it illuminates all the blood that's uh, underneath the skin. Um, and then you kind of get this red color, and it's, I don't know, it makes it read a lot better that it's a thin flap of skin. Um, and at this point, I'm sort of stressing out about it, because I'm looking at my wings, and they're very dark, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to convey that. I feel a little bit better about the ears, but I'm still unsure. And at this point, I'm pretty sure I was going to keep it in black and white, and so that's why I was uh, still stressing out a little bit. Um, but we are over halfway done with this painting. Um, the black and white is nearly finished and um, in not too long I'm going to be dropping in some color, um, which I didn't think I was going to do, like I said before, but I kept looking at it and I was like, well, let's see, let's let's start a new layer and layer some color on and um, we'll see how it turns out. 
uh, you can see the the painting up close is still kind of rough, and I really, you know, if I was really doing this for um, like a production or for somebody, I would be much closer and paying much more attention to how everything is uh, nice looking. Oh, this was a bit of a leap of faith. <laughs> I didn't feel like he was cute enough, um, so I was like, oh, what can I do? What can I do? And so I decided to put a little hat on him. Um, and this was kind of just done from memory. I wanted to do like one of those newspaper boy um, hats, but I didn't really know what they looked like all that much, so I kind of just guessed, and I think I got at least fairly close. Um, but I thought that added a lot to the painting, a lot of character, and I think it helped sell the cute factor um, quite a bit more, and I was very happy with um, how it turns out in the end, as far as the hat. <laughs> I think it was a good decision, but when I was drawing, I was like, I don't know about this. Um, you see, I'm here, I'm just sort of tightening up, trying to find the lighting and the rim lights. I have a bit of a thing for rim lighting. It just, to me, it adds a lot of depth and a lot of drama. Oh, you see here, um, I put a color layer, and I'm just laying down um, the first color that came to mind, and um, putting the red color on made me feel a lot better about the ears, because you can kind of see it already reads as a thinner flap of skin because it's a more redder color. Um, gives it more of a, you know, that blood underneath the skin sort of idea. Um, and I'm fiddling around with the hat. I was unsure at this point if the hat was going to really work out, but it seemed to in the end. Um, I wanted, initially thought of the pants as white, but um, in looking at the colors I was choosing and the values, I was like, well, probably better just stick with some good old jeans. Um, and here I'm stressing over the, the wings, and the tongue ended up weird, like, the, with the overlay layer, it got all crazy red, and so I had to go in and do some extra touch-up with it, and I like a lot of drooly things, <laughs> I was enjoying the drool, um, and you can see there, as soon as I lay the drop shadow in, how much more, like, realism it has, I'm always, that's like one of my favorite parts, sometimes I just leave the drop shadow out for a long time, even though it doesn't make any sense to, but at some point I like to just drop it in because I feel I like to look see the transformation of the whole painting um, once the drop shadows add because it just gives it gives it a place in space kind of. Oh, oh, here you see, um, I found out a good little trick, and it's um, laying down a dark red um, in overlay over the thin flap of skin part, and then hitting it with the dodge kind of obsessively. Um, and it really, like, I don't know, it does its magic. The dodge tool, I, a lot of people think it's cheating, <laughs> um, just because it it has this magical property of just really suggesting a lot of light, and when you put it with the red over around some um, more skin tony kind of things, it really gives that magnificent f effect of subsurface scattering, and so I was pretty psyched out when that worked out and threw it on everywhere, because... I was very excited about it, um, but we're coming to the near the end of the painting, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this little cute guy. I'm quite satisfied with how he turned out, um, and I'll definitely be doing more painting videos in the future, so if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see me paint in case I'm out of ideas, um, let me know. But I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a nice day. Things done.